in an era of heightened societal divisions, Chris Como and Tucker Carlson embark on thought-provoking dialogues, delving into the depths of past conflicts and the pressing need for mutual comprehension. Their discussions transcend mere ideological disparities, unveiling a shared recognition of the intrinsic value of empathy and interpersonal bonds. Through their unfiltered exchange of perspectives, they exemplify the potential for constructive discourse amidst profound discord. These dialogues emerge as beacons of optimism, illuminating pathways towards genuine comprehension and the reconciliation of fractured narratives within our polarized media landscape. Don't miss. How does the conversation between Chris Como and Tucker Carlson reflect the importance of empathy in societal discourse? What are some key points emphasized by Cuomo and Carlson regarding the need for meaningful dialogue? How do the personal experiences shared by Cuomo and Carlson contribute to the broader discussion on societal polarization? So one of the reasons I think that you called me was because we'd had such similar lives and you're one of the few people who kind of understand. And both of us um, spent decades in one world, were exiled from it. Uh, and I think the question is like, what if we learn from this? You first. I'm still trying to figure it out. Uh, and I knew it was important to reach out when you were going through your exit, let's call it. And uh, because I knew the pain of it and I knew the challenge of it. I knew the pain of it and I knew the challenge of it. In recognition of the trials and tribulations faced by individuals, we extend our empathy and support, emphasizing the significance of compassion and unity amidst adversity. And Everything is different, but I do believe that one of the lessons I've learned is you have to think about how other people are being affected by situations, especially once you have pain in your own life. You have to think about how other people are being affected by situations, especially once you have pain in your own life. The essence of empathy and the profound significance of considering the experiences of others it underscores that personal adversity holds the potential to significantly enhance one's capacity for compassion and deepen their comprehension of others' journeys. And it doesn't matter what you agree with, what you like, what you don't like. It's all gotten so far removed from humanity that the idea that, I don't like that Tucker Carlson takes a bite out of my ass on his show on a regular I, I basis. I think you had got good reason not to like me. I um, think that, that would be fair. But that that means that this is not somebody who you should care about as a human being. And uh, I feel like our culture isn't working anymore, that everybody retreats with their own. And as a result, everybody is against one another for the same kinds of reasons. Everybody retreats with their own. And as a result, everybody is against one another for the same kinds of reasons. Addressing the issue of social polarization and the breakdown of meaningful discourse, there's a poignant emphasis on fostering empathy and forging connections that transcend ideological divides. And it's not working. And if it's not working, then why aren't we trying something different? Why wouldn't I reach out to somebody who has a family and who has a following and is dealing with a hard time to see if I can help and see what's going on in their life and what they're about? And I was concerned about calling you at first because I thought you might be thinking that this is like a spite phone call or something. You know what I mean? Or it'd be like, why are you calling me? What do you want to gloat or something? You know, I didn't want to make anything worse for you. Um, but as you say, there's such tremendous power in conversation. But as you say, there's such tremendous power in conversation emphasizing the potency of constructive conversations that mend fractures and foster empathy. It champions the belief in the catalytic force of courteous exchanges. Yes. We only know what we're told about people and the snippets that people want us to see <laughs> and the context. Now, now, I'm not saying that like, you know, you're one benefit of context away from never of saying anything that I don't think you should say, but <laughs> what is lost by doing this? What, what, what is lost by this? How can this not be helpful to sit across from somebody and talk to them instead of about them? What is lost by doing this? What is lost by this? How can this not be helpful to sit across from somebody and talk to them instead of about them? Challenging the worth of hostility and discord, it champions an ethos of empathy and cooperation in tackling conflicts and bridging disparities. In a twist that catches one off guard, Tucker Carlson and Chris Cuomo engage in a jovial exchange punctuated with laughter as they delve into the origins of past conflicts. 
Despite the inherent tension lingering between them, a delightful interlude emerges as they navigate the intricate dynamics of the media landscape. Amidst the banter, they catch a glimpse of the challenges entailed in upholding integrity amidst personal vulnerabilities and relentless criticism. Laughter acts as a conduit, momentarily easing the strain of ideological disparities and fostering an atmosphere conducive to mutual comprehension. Don't miss, what were Tucker Carlson's motivations for targeting Chris Cuomo? How did Chris Cuomo react to Tucker Carlson's attacks? How did Tucker Carlson justify his actions despite admitting to feeling a bit dirty about them? And, you know, we can go through different stuff that I say, that you say, because I still want to know why you came after me as much as you did. Because I'm way. a dick, probably. Because I'm a dick, probably. Embracing self-awareness involves recognizing one's own imperfections and embracing them with a genuine willingness to acknowledge mistakes instead of shifting blame onto others. <laughs> It's easy because I don't like CNN and I really mean that in, in my heart of hearts. I really just don't. But why me? I don't know. Um, How can you not know? It was so <laughs> intentional. It was so frequent. Because people kept sending me videos from Instagram. You. Of, it was me. It was <laughs> you. <laughs> I sent him the first video and then he was done. What was wrong with me lifting weights? Nothing, You're an outdoorsman. I just couldn't. I. I mean, I was pissed about the COVID thing. That is totally true. I didn't buy any of this from day one. That was totally real. But that's not, what I did was not really uh, a pure refutation of your positions on COVID. It was me taking the cheap shots, which I'm not always above. And, uh, but you should be, you should be above that. Did it feel good when you would come after me like felt that? felt a little dirty. I felt a little dirty. Manifesting unease or apprehension regarding one's actions, it signifies an acknowledgement of ethical uncertainty or misconduct in one's conduct. Felt a little dirty. Dirty good or dirty you dirty? You know, I'm not really a dirty good guy. You know, I'm not really a dirty good guy. In his narrative, he places a spotlight on internal turmoil and the shades of moral uncertainty, delving into the ethical ramifications of his choices. He candidly confronts the discord within himself, grappling with conflicting urges and impulses. You know what I mean? Because like, like, you enjoyed it. I, Let me know, tell you, there, there, there is no a moment shame in your in the game. room. No, I guess cameras aren't picking up all the people sitting here. But, <laughs> I mean, in the sense that, you know, I don't want to use any kind of sexual metaphor, but there, there is one for this. It's like something you shouldn't be doing, but there's kind of the animal thrill of doing something wrong. I guess is what I would say. You loved it. You loved it and it worked but for I you. But I will say this. And my in-laws watch you. Do you know how hard it is to deal with having your in-laws enjoy a joke that makes you want to, you know, do bad things that are going to cost you civil litigation money? And Somebody and did say, you know, Chris Cuomo is a lot bigger than you. Maybe, maybe you should be careful. I just couldn't, you know, I almost, I, I, I have weaknesses. I will say, I don't I think I have weakness for women. I gave up drinking many years ago, but I still, I'm still beset by the weaknesses of the flesh. And one of them is mockery. I just can't help it. I just can't help it. Unveiling vulnerability or a sense of lost command over one's deeds. Hints at the sway of inherent inclinations or vulnerabilities that prove arduous to defy. My wife, I will say, who we were just with, it's an unusually good person and uh, would always say, I don't like it when you're mean. You're not a mean person. You shouldn't be mean. Oh, and I'm very dependent on my wife's approval. Like I'm totally happy to admit that. And she never criticizes me, but she in a gentle, gentle way, like, I don't like it when you're mean. That's not who you are. <laughs> it's kind of who I am. That's the problem. <laughs> you know? In a fascinating exchange, Chris Cuomo and Tucker Carlson navigate the intricate labyrinth of media dynamics, delving into the nuanced fabric of their personal interactions at moments that catch us off guard. Their discussions, raw and unfiltered, peel back the layers, revealing Tucker Carlson's underlying motivations in his persistent critique of Chris Cuomo. Despite the tumultuous terrain of their past encounters, they find common ground in recognizing the intricate tapestry of their roles within the media sphere. This dialogue serves as a beacon, illuminating the pathways to understanding and empathy, transcending the barriers of ideological divergence.
Through this exchange, we catch a glimpse of the humanity that resides within these two influential figures amidst the ever-shifting currents of the media landscape. Chris Cuomo and Tucker Carlson both acknowledge the profound impact of dialogue in grasping diverse viewpoints and bridging divides. Genuine communication and dialogue serve as pivotal tools in fostering comprehension and empathy, particularly among individuals harboring disparate perspectives. Tucker Carlson's acknowledgement of potentially targeting Chris Cuomo due to personal bias and animosity towards CN signifies an admission of his own fallibility and prejudices. Evaluating the significance of personal bias in shaping interactions and perceptions of others necessitates introspection and self-awareness. Discussions regarding the public perception of interactions, including the gratification derived from contentious exchanges, provoke contemplation on the influence of media dynamics on individual conduct and self-perception. This discourse delves into ethical considerations surrounding the role of media narratives in shaping individual identity and behavior, as well as in portraying individuals within the public domain. Tucker Carlson's admission of feeling a little dirty, juxtaposed with Chris Como's reflection on the impact of public perception on personal integrity, emanates authenticity amidst societal pressures and expectations. Upholding personal integrity amidst the tug of war between societal norms intrinsic values, and external influences remains paramount. Tucker Carlson's reference to relying on his wife's validation and Chris Cuomo's admission of grappling with his public persona raise inquiries about the role of external validation and cultivating self-awareness and conduct. These reflections prompt considerations regarding the significance of self-validation and internalized values as well as the ramifications of dependence on external validation on individual autonomy and authenticity. What do you think? I promote myself and my videos. Hello, I'm Bong Sim, a Canadian resident of Asian descent. During the day, I work as a professional counselor, and at night, I do Uber food delivery. Instead of speaking in my videos, I prefer to express myself through writing. In today's world, speaking the truth can have serious consequences, both for my professional life and personal well-being. That's why I'm choosing to pen down my thoughts and using a platform to share them on my behalf. Some people find my videos uninteresting, too strict, and they even criticize the appearance of the individuals featured, including their tiredness, Asian, or perceived flaws. I understand these concerns, but I genuinely believe in the purpose behind creating these videos. Unfortunately, recent Canadian legislation has resulted in the censorship of free speech and online content. And although Google hasn't explicitly admitted their involvement, I suspect they play a part in it. Despite my efforts to monetize my content on YouTube, I haven't been able to earn any income from it. I've tried three times, and all my attempts were rejected. They turned me down for reasons like lacking creativity, not having a recognizable face, or not having a distinct voice. Nevertheless, I've made several adjustments to my videos, hoping to overcome these challenges. If you share my belief and support what I'm doing, I would genuinely appreciate your backing.